This study is the first time that the entire genome of the koala has been mapped and described. We found that the koala genome is actually a little bit bigger than the human genome and we found over 26,000 genes that belong to the koala. This discovery is important because koalas really are an iconic species. They're, they're recognised around the world. Unfortunately, they are in danger. Lots of their populations are vulnerable and in need of protection. And this genome gives us the data to help us make really informed decisions for their conservation. Koalas are at risk due to a number of factors, and these include habitat loss, urbanisation and disease. And the genome allows us to get right down at the DNA level to help us understand how all those different factors are affecting this really important species. Koalas have a diet that is predominantly eucalyptus leaves. And in fact, it's very high in toxins in the form of plant secondary metabolites to the point where most mammals would find the level fatal. Koalas don't. And we've, the genome has give, given us insight into why not, because koalas seem to have many more detoxification genes than other species. And these genes are in fact metabolic enzymes, allowing them to modify these toxic molecules and excrete them, probably through their urine. The genomes allowed us to reconstruct population size right back through evolutionary time. And we, what we've discovered is that koala populations peaked probably around 50,000 years ago. And then between 30 and 40,000 years, they really dropped off to much, much lower numbers. We already know that koalas, they're marsupials. They have very specific developmental requirements in the pouch because they do so much of their developing there. They're born at 35 days. And so for the next six months, they do a lot of growth in the pouch. Through the genome, we've actually identified some milks that seem to be novel to the koala which obviously are very important for their development. In addition to that, we already knew that koalas are born without an immune system. And the genome, because it's a very high quality genome, has allowed us to characterise in great detail a lot of their immune genes. This is the first time a mammalian genome has been entirely sequenced in Australia. It's also only the fourth marsupial to have been sequenced globally. We established the Koala Genome Consortium because there was significant interest in conservation and understanding disease in this very important species. The consortium started off with a handful of researchers here in Australia. It's since expanded to include 54 researchers from seven different countries around the world, representing 29 institutions. It sounds simple on paper to sequence a genome, but in fact, it's a very complex task and it does represent a major breakthrough. It took us five years. Uh, we launched in 2013 and so in 2018, we have an incredibly high quality genome for a very iconic marsupial that can be used as a springboard for so many new studies. The applications for a genome, once it's been sequenced, are almost endless. And for koala, we've already seen the importance of genetic information recognised and incorporated into management of koalas in New South Wales. So it's already known that koalas are probably very efficient at processing pain relief medication, for example. And now we've got the genome that completely confirms that they have this super detox ability. So future applications will probably really assist with veterinary care, pain relief in this species to make sure that they're, they're, they have adequate medications in the future. In addition to that, they're often given very high dosages of anti-chlamydia medication. So the antibiotics important for treatment of chlamydia. And, and again, the genome has helped us that, to understand that probably this is because they're really efficient at detoxification. And th this can now be used to assist with improved medications for some of the well-known diseases in koalas. The next phase in the koala genome work that we're doing is really focused on conservation. And it's using the historical specimens that we have here in the museum to understand what's changed in the last 200 years since humans really started impacting their environment and doing things like hunting koalas and reducing their populations. So our next steps are taking the past to inform the future 
to ensure that we have the best conservation strategy possible for this really important species.